interesting because Krom, uh, Krom is very strong against Rob on stage. You know, there's a character who can really press some buttons at Rob, make him uh, have a really tough time in neutral, and if he's getting juggled. However, we all know Krom does not have the best recovery. We all know Rob has incredibly strong edge guarding and corner carry. Mm -hmm. And that can be a lot to deal with on the Krom side. At the moment, we were seeing Juice Box get battered and bruised a little bit to open this game, number one. And yep, you're seeing all, all the Chrome tools come to play, but as soon as you step off the side yep. for a second there, that top presents itself. It can be really scary on the recovery. Oh, I love that fair mash out. It looks like Cafe saw that he was not quite in range for a jab back air with the tipper hit and the DI. Uh, so he went for run up, ju like jump falling there. Uh, but Juicebox just recognized what was going on, just swings out of it. Doesn't give him an air dodge to punish, doesn't jump away. Um, Swings, swings right out of it with that forward air. That, that forward air is a surprisingly good disadvantage mm -hmm. to just because it comes out so quickly. It's so quick. Also, it's not disjointed per se, but he reaches out so far in front of him that the range is bigger than you'd expect from it. Mm -hmm. Especially compared to like his center of mass. But oh, we're seeing, good. we're seeing good top gameplay come out from Cafe here. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Just take it slow on the ledge trap. You put off the pressure off stage. Then once you're on stage, a poke of a forward air will seal the deal. So yeah, that was the first stop going to Cafe, and he has been in some level of control this game, and is certainly still very close, and his up air might take it. Gets caught with uh, maybe the no DI, couldn't tell if that was, uh, I don't think that was the best DI. I um, think off of the up tilt, it might not have mattered with the DI. Yeah, it also might not have made a difference at that point. But it, you, you also could be right, it could be both things at once. Yeah. Ooh, that air dodge was, that looks juicy for a yeah. second for like a, a big F smash swing, but Cafe shows restraint. Yep, and you know, it may have been just a little bit too low. You don't want to give Rob a free chance to get back on the stage. Well, uh, no, that laser went the wrong way, and I think that could have cost like the, an extended edge yeah. guard. Okay, yeah, so Rob players generally are going to know how Rob ledge trap setups work. Uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go for him, mm. uh, but certainly Juicebox aware of that one, but Cafe catches the roll, the very back hit of that F tilt. That's such a good move. One of the best grounded normals in the game for sure. Uh huh, and it's enough to kill Rob of all people off the side of the stage. One of the heavier contenders that's at the top of the meta these days. Yeah, we all know Rob is very big, and as such, he is getting comboed into Oblivion right now. Seventy-two percent off, basically one interaction. It's I, one combo and then a parry on the nair. You, you got to show that nair parry early and mm -hmm. often in any versus Rob yeah. matchup because that takes away one of like the the freest neutral win tools yep. that Rob has, right? Yeah, that move is minus four on shields. Typically, they're not going to be hitting you frame perfect into the ground. It's going to be more like minus six, minus seven, mm. realistically. Um, but if you carry it, now you're up to like minus nine, minus ten. You can do pretty much anything you want out of that. So a move that you know on shield is one of his, even on shield is one of his best neutral openers. Uh, but on parry, almost anyone in the game is going to get a big punish. Especially Crumb. Crumb has a great out of shield game. That oh, okay, uh, so that's tilt. And a good spot dodge cancel game, too, yep. to seal up uh, game number one. Is that, Rob? Uh, you know, on that DI, I'm not necessarily sure. But also, that move that was just was, really uh, strong. Yeah, I think he was trying to roll away when he saw that it didn't work. Or he was trying to... Yeah, this, this is the end here. We'll see what was going on. I think he was trying to b either back throw or roll away when he saw that it missed and just got caught holding straight out into the last in. That's it. Uh, yeah, a roll backwards would have made a ton of sense there as a, as a panic option. But that means Cafe goes up game. We're sticking to Pokemon Stadium for game number two. Yeah, so running it right back, Krom Rob. We saw a really strong start from Cafe last time. And then Juicebox started to bring it back a little bit, uh, but Cafe was just able to keep that lead going. Uh, and the damage output is just so fast for both these characters. They both have so much of it uh, off of so many different combo starters as well. You know, Krom off of almost any of his aerials, Rob off of like a throw or an aerial or a down tilt. A lot of choices. And you know, we didn't see really much of the edge guarding game at all on Juicebox's side. A lot of his kills were off of those uh, down throw mix-ups, mm -hmm. which is, isn't a bad way to win a game. But like we mentioned, if you want to take advantage of this weakness of Krom, you want to kill him much earlier than 70% potentially and just make a statement of a win. Yeah, and I feel like that's not, you know, it's not that Rob cannot win without, you know, without edge guards, but I feel like he doesn't win the matchup very well without edge guards. You know, the advantages he has in this matchup are all about the off-stage game, whereas the advantages Krom has are mostly the on-stage part of it, being able to oppress you in neutral and juggle you for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we've seen those advantages Ooh, bear good. fruit so far, but then that great call-out up smash turns this uh, the favors around for Juicebox in game two. Okay, reading the tech chase with a sliding F tilt, and then, okay, continuing the pressure with that fade back back air. Good stuff here to Cafe evening it up. 
good parry. That back air spaced so far away that it was safe. Uh, Rob back air, you know, spaces itself to be safe on shield, but you gotta space it that far to be safe mm. on parry. Um, so, it's a good job there by Juicebox to keep himself safe, and he's keeping this game closer, although he is trailing in some percent here on the second stock. Yeah, he, he took one combo that had three forward errors in yeah. it on Pokemon Stadium. That's that's the kind of shenanigans Krom can do to Rob that you mentioned, right? Because yeah. you get just one neutral win. Yeah, I feel like this character in Krom has really fallen out of the meta to a degree. We see so much less of him now than we did in early Ultimate. Uh, but it's not that he's not a strong character. Uh, he can be a very frustrating character to play, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the potential to just instantly lose a stock to anything is so high in so many matchups. Uh, but when you play your cards right, it's still so strong. Oh, yeah. And especially at, at this level of play, like, like getting up to uh -huh. pools, getting into round two of pools, you'll see these players who aren't as adept at getting the edge guards in on Crumb. Like the top level players, they're always going to nail any of these edge guards on, on the up Bs, right? Yeah, I feel like that one, he kind of burned the gyro a little bit early. You might want to keep the gyro to hit Krom as he's coming to the ledge there, since mm -hmm. he's, he's going low, and Rob doesn't do as well with covering the low recovery as the one for, from outside the ledge. Right. Um, you kind of want to keep the gyro as an option there. That's a good <laughs> footstool, but he gets clipped by the up B as he tries to spike it. That was so close. That almost was a game three situation yeah. in, in the blink of an eye, like we mentioned. But Cafe holds on, and now we are on last stop. Yep, this is uh, this one's going in Juice Box's favor right now. But we've seen how quickly Cafe can tack on damage. Here's an opening. Gets 51 off this with Rob in the sky, and even though he does eventually get out of it, Cafe is right back in this one. Mm -hmm, the, the, that percent evened up in an instant. I actually was thinking maybe like suicide up B. Uh huh. Maybe that would have been in the cards. And uh, that, but well, the thing is, after like ever since the other than the first couple weeks of Ultimate, where it was truly ridiculous, um, you do have to be down around the stage level or lower. Uh, if you're any higher than that, Krom will usually die first. Oh, but oh, he went for it. Suicide up B. Maybe if he be reversed, boy. it would have caught. I think actually it would have. That was uh, a bold move, and it almost worked out. But instead, Juicebox takes it, and we're going to game three. Our first this, game three, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was, was going to say, I think this is our first uh, game three set of the block. And there, there's the footstool just barely off the mark. And I think, I think if you went a little high. Maybe, I, maybe yeah. you didn't have enough time to pull the trigger on the down air at all, and you should have just continued the ledge trap instead. But I like the attempt. Mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe down angled F smash would outrange it as well. I don't know for sure, but I feel like that is a relatively large hitbox as well. Yeah, that could have that could have been an option. Right, we're going right by PS2, so the whole set here, uh, game three, still Krom Rob the whole way through. I'm just playing at that perfect angle, jumping around each of the platforms left and right. In case any of those projectiles mm -hmm. finds the mark, because, like, wh what are you going to do? You can't angle it right above that platform, right? Exactly. This has opened up a huge opportunity here for Cafe. Again, battering and bruising this robot across the stage. Yeah, a lot of damage coming out here. Smacks that gyro out of existence. And now pick, goes pick it up as well. Uh, and I think we've seen this whole set that Cafe has had a really solid game plan for the gyro. You know, this is a super common character. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna find people who don't know how Rob works at this point. Mm -hmm. But Cafe is showing a particularly strong item game, which is really important to dealing with this character. Yeah, some, sometimes you can have a strong item game, and there's still there's a day where you yeah. just can't pick up the top. The top just exists, it's, and it's, it's so immovable. The, the hitbox of it is like not much of a different size than like how far away most people can actually pick up items. Mm -hmm. So it can be very difficult for some, especially some of the heavier characters. Their item drop box is very small. There's the back air, though. Mm -hmm. What a great comeback factory here for Juicebox. And this is a great set here so far. They've really been back and forth. Like Cafe kind of took control of that game one. He was trying to take control of game two. Ju Juicebox stole it back and then started to run away with it. Now this game three, dead even so far. You see how low that shield got for just a second there for yeah. Cafe? It, it was scary, but angle at the perfect time. And of course, you just get one combo going and your shield's right back to full. Okay, they're trying to cross up each other a little bit, but no one's taking the bait until just now on that jab. Mm -hmm. Finally, we see a whiff grab there from Rob. Rob's grab range, not awful, but certainly not the best. Um, can be baited out relatively easily if you're a little bit outside of his range. As running off stage is Cafe, and now he takes a commanding lead. A stock lead sitting at just 39%. And now it feels like we're really going to need to see Juice Box yep. go for something other than that as Cafe carries him off the side into the upbeat. And Cafe moving on out of pools. 